Television by Roald Dahl is a heartfelt, emphatic appeal to parents to save their beloved children from the dangers of brain freeze, which happens when children watch television all day. The poet advises the parents to get children to read instead, because reading opens up the imagination of the child and gets him or her to find fulfillment by actively exercising his or her mind, which is contrary to what happens when children passively watch television all day. The poem takes a comical look at children staring fixedly at the television set and the vehement protests that might follow when the parents take the television set away and make children read books instead. Roald Dahl needs no introduction. He is one of the most loved modern writers in English. He was a British novelist, short story writer, poet, screenplay writer and even a fighter pilot during World War II. The poem in brief. The poet tells all parents that they must never allow their children to even go near the television set. It might make life easier for the parents who have to manage their children all day, but television severely damages a child's intelligence. The poet then talks about the joys of reading for children. He requests the parents to throw away the television set and install a bookcase in its place. He knows that children will protest angrily at this, but he is confident that they will soon turn to books, they will experience the joys of reading and later on they will thank their parents for doing what is actually good for them. Now let us read the poem and understand the meaning. The most important thing we've learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. So the poem begins with a strong, emphatic message to parents. The poet says that as far as children are concerned, they have learned that children should not be allowed to even go near the television set. And it would be best if parents did not install a television set at home because it is an idiot box that makes children idiots. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. The poet says that in almost every house that they have been to, they have watched children staring at the screen with wide eyes. These children are so lazy that they lie lazily in one place and when they move, they move lazily. They stare at the te television set continuously till their eyes pop out of their sockets. The poet jokingly and as a hyperbole says that last week in someone's place, they saw a dozen eyeballs that must have popped out of children's eyes lying on the floor. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it, until they are absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk. The poet says that children sit and stare at the television set all day like unintelligent beings. They get totally hypnotized and drunk with all the shocking, frightening rubbish that they see. Hypnotized means they believe whatever they see on TV to be real and think that TV is an accurate representation of the real world. Drunk means they get addicted to it and lose control of their mental faculties. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the windowsill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. The poet says that they know, they understand why you allow your children to watch television. It is because they are so engrossed by it that they stay quiet. They don't run around or play mischief. They don't fight and hurt each other. This allows the parents to finish their household chores. 
the parents are then able to concentrate on cooking lunch and washing the dishes that have piled up in the sink but did you ever stop to think to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved tot the poet then asks parents that have you ever paused to think have you ever reflected upon what hours and hours of television viewing does to your beloved toddler it rots the sense in the head it kills imagination dead it clogs and clutters up the mind it makes a child so dumb and blind he can no longer understand a fantasy a fairy land so television makes a child dumb his or her intelligence rots away the child becomes unimaginative the junk on television blocks and crowds up or messes up the child's mind as a result the child becomes so dumb and blind to active thinking and exercising the imagination that he loses the ability to understand the beauty and sensibility in a fantasy or a fairy land his brain becomes as soft as cheese his powers of thinking rust and freeze he cannot think he only sees a child who watches television all day loses his mental faculties the poet uses a simile by comparing the brain to cheese to explain how soft that means pliant and useless the brain becomes his powers of thinking get spoiled and stagnate there is no development there is only degra degradation the child is no longer able to use his brain actively and think he only sees passively all right you'll cry all right you'll say but if we take the set away what shall we do to entertain our darling children please explain so after hearing what the television is doing to their children the parents will grudgingly agree they will say all right we agree with what you are saying but if we take away the television set then how will our darling children entertain themselves how will they stay occupied how will they use their time please explain to us we'll answer this by asking you what used the darling ones to do how used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented have you forgotten don't you know we'll say it very loud and slow the poet says that they will answer this question by asking another question to the parents in return that what did your darling children do before how did they stay happy and contented before this monster which is the television was invented they will ask the parents if they really don't know it if they have really forgotten it then they will tell the parents the answer loudly and slowly so that they understand it very well this time they used to read they read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more great scott gadzooks one half their lives was reading books so earlier children used to read books they loved reading it was their hobby they never got tired of it they read and read and read and read continuously great scott gadzooks these are exclamations of surprise at the wonderful capacity of reading and loving books that children used to have the nursery shelves held books galore books cluttered up the nursery floor and in the bedroom by the bed more books were waiting to be read so the shelves in the nursery room had plenty of books stacked in them there were so many books that the children loved reading and many of them were even lying about on the floor not only the nursery but even in the bedroom next to the bed there were books lying about so the children had an active relationship with books which is why the poet personifies them by saying that more books were waiting to be read the poet uses exclamation marks to marvel at the sheer love of books that children used to have such wondrous fine fantastic tales of dragons gypsies queens and whales
and treasure isles and distant shores where smugglers rode with muffled doors and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships and elephants so the poet says that children used to read well crafted fantastic stories that created wonder these stories were about dragons gypsies queens whales islands that had hidden treasure shores in far away lands that smugglers sneaked off to by rowing quietly children read about pirates sailing ships and elephants and cannibals crouching round the pot stirring away at something hot it smells so good what can it be good gracious it's penelope children read stories about cannibals gathered around a cooking pot focusing eagerly on stirring the dish which they were cooking the poet then adopts a humorous note by saying that since the dish smells so good they were probably cooking penelope since they were cannibals penelope refers to the beautiful and much sought after wife of the greek hero odysseus so all these stories took children to a world that they had never imagined before where they could experience extraordinary adventures and also enrich their imagination the younger ones had beatrix potter with mr todd the dirty rotter and squirrel nutkin pigling bland and mrs tiggy winkle and the younger children could read stories written by beatrix potter who was another british writer they read about mr todd who was a bad guy they read about squirrel nutkin and pigling bland and mrs tiggy winkle even the names of the characters inspire one to think for example that squirrel nutkin loved nuts so much that he spent all his day gathering them Pigling Bland was probably a boring, dull young pig. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle was probably a podgy, affectionate old lady. The poet ends the last line here with a dash and an and to show that the world of books is never ending. Just how the camel got his hump, and how the monkey lost his rump. and mr toad and bless my soul there's mr rat and mr mole oh books what books they used to know those children living long ago so children used to read these unusual funny tales that tickle your imagination and also make you laugh such as how the camel got his hump and how the monkey lost his rump or backside they read about other animal characters like mr toad mr rat and mr mole so there was no shortage of lovable and lively characters for these children and they got all of these through books which is why the poet says oh books what books they used to know those children living long ago so here the poet becomes wistful remembering the good old times and also reminds the parents subtly that when they were children they too read these books so was it really all that long ago that is an indirect implied question and a hyperbole so please oh please we beg we pray go throw your tv set away and in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall so the poet emphatically requests and exhorts parents to get rid of their television completely and in its place to install a lovely bookshelf on the wall then fill the shelves with lots of books ignoring all the dirty looks the screams the yells the bites and kicks and children hitting you with sticks so the next step will be to fill up the bookshelves with plenty of books children will obviously protest forcefully at this but the poet advises the parents to ignore all the dirty looks the screams the yells the bites and kicks and even children hitting you with sticks so the poet again skillfully uses a hyperbole here to convince parents to do what is good for their children even if they meet with strong opposition fear not 
because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do they'll now begin to feel the need of having something to read so fear not with these lines the poet switches over from his loud convincing argument to a reassuring tone for the parents he tells them don't be afraid of your children's tantrums because these will last for a short time if the parents do not give in to their children's demands then in about a week since they have nothing else to do they will now start feeling the need to read books and once they start oh boy oh boy you'll watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts they'll grow so keen they'll wonder what they'd ever seen in that ridiculous machine that nauseating foul unclean repulsive television screen so once the children start reading you will be amazed and overjoyed when you see them slowly and steadily enjoying books they will love reading books so much that now they will wonder why they had been addicted to the television they will understand how ridiculous disgusting foul filthy and repulsive the television actually is the poet uses very strong words here to underscore how harmful television is for children and later each and every kid will love you more for what you did and sometime later each and every kid every single one of them will love their parents even more because they will realize that their parents did the best for them they will understand that their parents help them to make the correct choice roald dahl is one of the most prolific of modern writers in english prolific means someone who is hugely productive he was a british novelist short story writer poet a screen writer fighter pilot and has a large fan following among young readers The poem television takes a comic look at a serious problem. So in a very light-hearted manner he's bringing a serious problem to light. He's highlighting it and because it is a comic look it makes us consider what the poet is trying to say. So it takes a comic look at a serious problem among young children today. The poem warns us about the dangers of excessive television watching. he tells us that the tv robs the mind of the power of imagination and creativity when you read your mind is working because you make sense of the words and you visualize so your brain is working to its maximum but when you watch television everything is front of you also there is no novelty in television so you are robbed of your imagination and creativity so dal in his characteristic exaggerated style warns that we will become zombies if we keep staring uninterrupted at the television for long hours so we will become zombies we will not be able to think we will vegetate if we keep on staring at the television all the time he advises us to read books for this will enable us to discover deeper levels of joy find fulfillment in life and open a whole new and exciting world for us <coughs> the world of books is much wider than the world of television there is more variety there is a large large body of work that we will never be able to understand we will leave undiscovered if we do not start to read books